This is the Moto G7. Motorola released this phone earlier this year in February for $300, and it's the first time in a long time that I've actually tested out a budget smartphone. Now, this phone can be had brand new for $180 currently. It comes with a SIM ejector tool, a bunch of paper I'll never read, a wall charger, and a standard USB to USB-C cable. When it comes to specs, we're talking about a 6.2 inch display that uses a Snapdragon 632 chipset with 4 gigs of RAM. So it's not a top of the line processor, but again, we're talking about a $180 phone. It has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, dual cameras in the rear, and a fingerprint reader right below to unlock the phone. Now there's a selfie camera up front, a micro SD slot for expandable storage, and it still has a headphone jack. Real quick, I want to give Mike at Simply Your Device a big thanks for letting me borrow his G7. Check him out if you have a chance. He's a good dude with great insights on a broad range of phones. So let me just start out by saying that the Moto G7 is a really impressive phone for its price at $180 sub $200. As far as build quality, it's a plastic build, so it's not super premium or anything, but it still feels really good in the hand. The one thing that I will say though is it is a fingerprint magnet. This plastic here, it's just, it makes things just, if you want, get a case if you don't wanna have like your phone full of smudges all day. You know, after using a ton of flagship phones, I will say that I do experience minor lag here and there on the Moto G7. Usually when I'm doing a lot of things at once, for example, because the phone's new, I was trying to put like 15 new apps on there. So as that was like installing or downloading and I was trying to do other things, I mean, you could totally see that there's gonna be lag if, if you're gonna be multitasking that way. But most people aren't doing that, and especially in this case, I'm only doing that for that one scenario. I'm not gonna be doing that, you know, in the future. So if you're using it like on an app-to-app -app basis, you should be okay. It's, it's not gonna be that bad. As far as aesthetics go, it's your typical glass slab for a phone. But again, for a phone under $200, it's pretty up there when it comes to style. You do have the power slash unlock button that's textured, so that's a nice touch so that it differentiates itself from the volume rockers up above. And actually speaking of volume, the one thing that I will say is I wanted to test out the volume of the phone. So I just played a YouTube video and as soon as I started playing it, I was kind of thrown back, not because the volume or the audio was was great or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's plenty loud, but it's only like one, um, right here, it's only one bottom firing speaker. I'm really used to having dual, dual firing speakers at this point, so it just kind of threw me back. I was like, wait, that doesn't sound right, and, and it's just because I'm used to two speakers and not one. As far as the display goes, I think the display looks really good. For a $180 phone, it's pretty bezel-less. You know, it does have a, a bigger chin here at the bottom. It has like the Motorola logo and it has the little uh, eye drop notch at the top for the front camera. But for a phone this cheap, I wouldn't expect something with that little of a bezel. The display looks pretty good and it's a pretty big display at 6.2 inches. And then as far as the fingerprint reader goes, it's pretty quick, pretty accurate. It's funny because when I first started using it, I forgot that, you know, flagship phones don't really come with fingerprint readers anymore. It's all facial recognition and, you know, my iPhone 11 Pro, uh, my Pixel 4, I'm just used to using Face ID or, you know, Face Unlock, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, as far as the fingerprint reader goes, it's pretty good. And it has that swipe down for notifications, which is like, one of the things that I loved about my Pixel 3 that I miss now on the Pixel 4. Also, this phone is rocking Android 9. Now, Motorola did say that they will eventually update to Android 10 on the Moto G7. I guess we'll have to wait and see if that actually becomes a thing. Now, last but certainly not least, the thing that I wanna try the most on this Moto G7 are the cameras. The rear camera, the front camera, testing day, night, recording audio, recording video, you know how I do. So 
Stay tuned for that. Otherwise, this is shaping up to be a pretty great phone for under $200, brand new. And if you haven't, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Jerome Ortega, and you can go ahead and take a look and see what the perks are there. And finally, check me out on Instagram at Phone Jerome and on Twitter at Phone Jerome. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.